just want to share something with you that will bless you. Titled, How to Be Ahead in Faith. How to be what? Ahead in faith. And when, what I mean by how to be ahead in faith, I actually mean in results of faith. Because if somebody says, I'm ahead in faith, you can't measure it by just looking at the person and saying, well, I'm a man of faith. It cannot be measured. You measure a man's faith by his results. That's what the Bible says in the book of James chapter 2. It says, somebody says, I have faith. He said, show me your your faith by your works is as you have results. That's how I know you have faith. Glory be to God forevermore. So, that's what I mean by how to go at, to be ahead. Glory be to God forevermore. So, let me read my text and then we'll take off from there. Go to the book of Matthew. Matthew. See Matthew or Matthew. Whatever. From chapter 14. I pray that this will sink very well into you. And it will be a blessing to you. I just consider it as, as a good way to start the year. Matthew chapter 14. Book of Matthew chapter 14. From verse 9. I will read from verse 9. Not that verse 19 is very relevant. But I just want to read it so that you can see the flow. This is, I will start, this is where Jesus fed 5,000, okay? The feeding of 5,000. And then I will start from there. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven. He blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. The disciples gave the loaves to the multitude. Follow this carefully. So they all ate and were fed. And they took up to a basket full of fragments that remained. Now, those who had eaten were about 5,000 men, beside women and children. Go on. That's not the story at all. This is story you just starting. I just read that place to connect something. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the what? The other side. Why he sent what? The multitudes away. Go on. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up to the mountain by himself to what? To pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, fourth watch is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. In the uh, first watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost, Holy Ghost. <laughs> and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Go on. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the world. So he said, come. When Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And I'm uh, beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Verse 2, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Hallelujah. I want to start my, this. it's a long read, but it's also good. Some of you have not read your Bible for a long time. So, coming to church and reading long gives you a good grasp of the scriptures. Like I said once again, the title of the message is to go, is how to be ahead, what? In faith. With your result of faith. Now, that 
place I read to you is a picture of salvation and the Christian journey in life. Follow me carefully. I know you are wondering how. How many of you know that Jesus is the bread of life? In feeding of 5,000, this is what they did. He took bread, right, and fish from somebody present. They gave it to his hand, multiplied it, they gave it back to the people. And Bible said the people were fed and they had 12 baskets left. Jesus was given to man, yeah, to humanity. Are you hearing me? Then, he came back to the hand of God. Because he pleased God to bruise him. Jesus was one breaking the bread and giving it to humanity. So he became bread in the hand of God who was broken. His broken became life to us. You understand what we are saying right now? His broken being broken became life to us. And after we feed on him, he became a burden life. Excess, excess left. Are you following me now? So that is the story. And then what was left was 12 baskets, which was a symbol of governance. He left for us 12 apostles who now became blessings to the entire world. And we are a product of that. Do you understand what we are talking about right now? So that is the picture of salvation demonstrated right there. And it has to be five loaves because it must be a number of grace. For we are saved by grace. For Jesus, by the grace of God, tasted death for every man. Do you understand what we are saying now? Now. As soon as that was done, he commanded the disciples, put them into the boat. And he said, we meet on the other side. And he himself departed. A symbol of him ascension. To go and be with the Father. To pray. Because Bible says, Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Bible says we have a high priest. Whoever lives to make what? Intercession for us. It may not be with you physically, but it's making intercession for you. Do you see what we are saying right now? It's a picture of salvation and the journey of a Christian. You cannot write all that down. It's when you get to me. <laughs> it's when you get to you have to go and develop it. Uh, hey, you have to just listen. If, if, you are, if you are writing, you'll be doing justice to the integrity of hearing. <laughs> just follow. So, he went to pray for them. But please, don't ever think that he is not unaware of the journey you are taking. Because Bible says as they were going on in life, the wind was contrary. Uh, Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That is why a Christian journey is difficult. Because the wind is contrary. But nevertheless, don't turn back. We are going to the other side. Jesus is coming. And he will come at the darkest time when no people don't expect him. He came at the, the third hour of the night. He is coming. Glory be to God forevermore. So, ignore the troubles. Don't worry yourself too much. He is coming. The, the troubled sheep will be stabilized in Jesus' mighty name. He's coming. That's why I don't bother myself. He's coming. I may not get the job, but he's coming. Hallelujah. I will not be able to do everything I wanted to do, but what is com- When he comes, everything will be said to say amen to that. Amen. That is the greatest hope of a Christian. If that hope that of his coming is taken away, Christianity means nothing. He's coming. Hallelujah. Amen. But meanwhile, while all of us are in the same boat, boat and we are struggling through the wind, so people can go ahead. Uh, Peter got ahead of everybody. Are you hearing me? We can all go in the same boat, facing the same same winds, but some people's experience can be different. That's why I came out with that topic, how to be ahead in faith. Everybody was in the same boat, making the same journey. But somebody had a different experience. 
Glory be to God forevermore. So all this one that you will sit with your friend and be, and be recanting how life is difficult, how the wind of life is tossing you to and fro, you better stop it. Look at them face to face. I say we cannot be Nigeria. We cannot be in the same office, oh, but I'm going to be ahead. Oh. My experience will be different. And you know Peter's experience was different. He was the only one who ever walked on the sea. Have you seen, have, is that time? Has anybody walked on water again? The only one. He was ahead. And he was ahead in many areas. Because if I want to go, 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 uh, go along that line, I will bore you. He was the only one that had revelation of Jesus Christ as he's the son of God. We are the Christ. Others say you are Elijah, you are this. He was the only one. He was the only one that witnessed the, 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 the trial of Jesus Christ physically. Others ran away. He followed. He was ahead in many, many areas. I could go on and on, but not today. Did they tell you why Bible, why was the why was famous apostle? And he was also told also the word. Uh, Jesus looked at him, said, Get behind me, Satan. Because those who do more make more mistakes. If you don't make a mistake, you are not doing anything. Exactly. People, I mean, if you say a man that sound like this, he's making a mistake. <laughs> you sound like this, say how? He's making a mistake. But you don't make a mistake when you don't do anything. You don't commit any error when you don't do anything. So don't bother. Let them criticize you that you are making too much mistakes because you are doing a lot. Somebody that did that doesn't do one thing, doesn't make any mistake. And the man that's doing ten things and making two mistakes, who is better? So keep doing. Let them keep talking. Call you whatever they want to call you. Are you hearing me? But thereafter, we shall know who is making progress with God or not. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I could go on and on and on and tell, tell you so many things. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. But this is it. Can I say, let me even say this to you before I go ahead. Because when we talk about making, making what, uh, what, what I call the topic again, be ahead in faith. Some of you would think that you need a lot of faith to be ahead in faith. You don't need a, don't need a lot. Honestly, believe me. You don't need a lot to be ahead in faith. Why, Pastor, why did you say that? Where we read, go back to where we read in Matthew chapter 14. Go back to where we read. Now, goody, praise God. Hey, I feel freer now. If you go to verse 30, go to verse 31. Look at Jesus, Jesus. Go to verse 31. Go to verse 31. Who's there now? And immediately Jesus stretched his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, what? Oh, you of what? Of little faith. Why did you doubt? That means all this he did. He did it with little faith. Oh, walking on the sea. Everything he did. He did it with what? With little faith. Uh, my face is not like Baba Odebo. Don't worry yourself about that one. The little you have, you can be ahead. I don't have faith like Christian Yakilome. Don't worry. You hear me? You don't need more than that little faith. Am I encouraging anybody here this morning? Because some of you, all you want to do, I want to study more. I want to build my faith more. No! Faith is built in action. Not by just one. There are many things you will never, never experience if you don't attempt it. You will never, never have any experience on that side. If all you do is read about that, you will never have any experience around, around, that, around that area. Uh, that is the difference between a mother who has raised five children, who has raised four children, and somebody who read child raising in university. <laughs> a degree. <laughs> have a degree, a master's degree in raising a child. That is maybe somebody who read in school and somebody who has raised five children. Uh, you can't compare the degree. You can't, you can't compare it. So all this reading, I'm the, 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 the five categories of faith. Faith, that's great faith, that's little faith, that's small faith, that's great faith. You see, until you begin to walk by faith, that's when you will realize what faith is. The same thing for prayer. Until you begin to pray, you don't understand prayer. 
You can understand all the theory. Start to pray. Amen, my brother. Glory be to God forevermore. So, if you want to go and be ahead in faith, listen, because this really ministered to me. I'm going to tell you some things that will be a blessing to you. If you want to be ahead of her, lay the foundation. Just a normal Christian journey of life. And somebody decided to be ahead of everybody. And that was Peter. Glory be to God forever. Man. He wasn't the best behaved. He was very impatient. He has anger problem. He was a fighter. He was one that used to cut somebody's hair. He was very, very violent. Everything about him was not, are you hearing me? He talked before he thinks. They, they took him to the mountain top. He said, let us stay here. Are you the one that brought it? Are you, how can you tell your host we have to stay? You know, he, many, 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 many things. After waiting for Jesus Christ, they didn't see Jesus Christ after two, two, five, five days. He said, let's go out fishing. Ministry has come to the end. Let's go back to our business. Are you hearing me? And he mobilized others. Let's go. Let's go out fishing. Didn't say, let's, I said, this is I want to go and fish. He said, let's go, go. Let's go and be fishing. He very, f- are you hearing me? But despite all of that, he was the one that God made to be the head of the church. He was the one because look, there's something God was looking for in him. And that was faith and sincerity. He was a sincere man. He made his mistakes openly. What? No, 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 no two face. You know the way you are like this and you are like different. No, 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 direct. You know, some people, you know, it will, some of you, it will take people to study you 25 years to understand you. The consistent studying of you. Half a degree in phenomenology. Don't be studying for me alone. <laughs> to understand that. No, no, you don't need that. People should be able to look at you and know who you are. You are not a pretentious person. Glory be to God forever, man. So, number one, if you want to be ahead in faith. I'm looking, watching my time now. If you want to be ahead in faith, number one. You must see what others don't see. If you want to be ahead in faith, you must see what others don't see. Glory be to God forevermore. They were all in that boat. They saw Jesus, but he was the only one who saw the possibility that I too can walk on water. Nobody saw it. Others saw a ghost. They all shouted. He said, no, this is Jesus. If he can do it, we walk together, we eat together. If he can do it, I can. He was the one that saw that possibility. Can I ask you, brothers and sisters, what do you see? What are you seeing, 2024? What possibilities are you seeing? Look, I thank God for the word of God. And I thank God for the good pastors God brought my way over the years who opened my eyes to see great things. Before in those days, we used to think that good life belonged to certain people. We used to think that some people are called to good life, some people are called to bad life. It's all your portion, stay in your side. We don't know that God has made the, has given an open check to everybody. We didn't know that God has come to us. We may, we may all have life and have it more abundantly. He took other people to begin to open our eyes so that we began to see. Is somebody hearing me right now? In those days, demons used to trouble us. Or did somebody began to open our eyes that we have authority. We began to see that you truly will have authority. Took weeks to teach us about the authority of the believer. That when you are challenged, you don't need to be running around. You can stand on yourself by yourself with the authority in the name of Jesus Christ and break the power of the devil over your life. We didn't know. We didn't even know that we have favor with God. We were always trying to please God. God is angry with us. That's what they told us. We didn't know that the blood of Jesus Christ has changed the equation. That we are now at peace with God. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God. The angels came and announced good will to all men. Good will. God, God is no longer angry with anybody. Good will to all men. The anger of God has been poured on Jesus Christ. Bible says it pleased God to bruise him. And he laid on him the iniquity of us all. Hallelujah. 
let me tell you something. I don't care where you came from this morning. I may not like what you are doing. It's me that don't like what you are doing. Are you hearing me? Your father may not like what you are doing, but it doesn't mean you are out of favor with God. For whipping me and death for a life, but his favor is for a lifetime. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about now? So it takes for your eyes to open. In those days, churches met on that canopy, on that, uh, on that tree, on that thatch roof. We had benches. Pastor that had a microphone was a breakthrough. But somebody began to do something different, the eyes of others began to open. That we could have AC. We could have this, we could have that. Then all of a sudden, resources began to come to back it up. Let me see, let me tell you about that. If you don't see it, resources, you can't get it. So, so it was possible for the man to actually walk on water and something will sustain him underneath. He saw it. He saw, he saw it. Jesus was walking. He saw it. You can become a billionaire if you can see it. He saw it. That is why you must have good parents. All of you that have good parents, you are blessed. Because your parents will show you possibility of what is possible. Have you noticed that the children of those rich, they are usually rich? In fact, if things went down for them somewhere along the line, one of the children will, boost, will, will bust out again. Why? Because they saw something. And if all your parents made you to see, work hard, make good grades, look for a job, that's all you will see. Work hard, you make good grades, you will still be working for those people. Because that's all they made you to what? To see. Twelve people in the boat. She be all of them just perform the same miracle right now, multiply bread. He multiply in his hand, he multiply in their hand. They could see if if we're working for this man, it could work for us. But only him saw it. If you are the one, bid me come. He saw it. He saw it. I am praying for you that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will see something this year. You will see something this year. Are you hearing me? Sir, you will see something this year. Do you know what you see? You are restless until you get it. Ah, you know, evil, 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 evil. Because there's something about seeing something. When you, when you keep something here, and somewhere you are not even you are not even able to but you pass there that place you have seen that thing several times. All of a sudden they now told that they are looking for that thing, and you will say no now. I saw it here. The way you will look for it will be different from somebody else. Who did they see? Oh, someone who didn't see will be looking for it. It could be here. It could be here. You are streamlined. No, I saw it where here. You begin to remove clothes. You begin to do everything. You you now say hey I saw you I saw it here. When you have seen it, it's difficult for somebody to derail you. Yes. Because what? You have seen it. There are certain shops I've seen abroad. Eh? And I want to go and buy somebody because I saw it. And I say, and I remember, you are not looking for that. I saw that shop here. You may miss it. You go back. Ah, finally. It may take you three or four times to move on that street. But because you have seen it. Because if you somebody that told you, after looking for it, you'll be discouraged. Maybe the person got it wrong. But if you are the one that saw it, you will persist until you see it, until you see it, locate it. May you see something. May you see something. There are things that God, that is happening around us. You know what God is all, all just doing? He's trying to make you see something. There are certain customers that will come and buy some things from you and, and spend some money in your presence. You now see possibilities. There are certain houses God will allow you to enter. When you see the house, you say, hey, now you create, now you also create, now you create this man. Ah. Now you create this man like this. This school you go. Now the same school. Your eyes begin to, something begin to bob open. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Right? Now, it is actually possible. We, 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 this year, we will see. I need to, that's how to get ahead in faith. Are you hearing me? Look, it, 
let me, let me, let me, oh my God, my time is nearly gone for you. And I want to tell you several things. Okay, please sit down, sit down. Because it's not about saying no, I have about five points. Do you know, they said, they were, they, they, Herod arrested Peter, right? He was going to kill him, right? He was going to bring him out after the Passover to kill him. Bible says, when the angel came to rescue him, Bible says he was sleeping. The angels woke him up, tapped him, said, get up! And the chains fell off. Somebody that was going to be killed the following morning, he was not praying. Oh God! Oh God! Come and intervene! Oh father of Abraham! I cannot die like this. They are saying, call him alive. No, he was sleeping. He was sleeping. What kind of peace is that? You know why? He had seen. You know where he saw it? There was a time they were under turbulence and the boat was going to sink. Jesus was sleeping in the boat. He has seen that you can go through trouble and be sleeping and God will come through for you. He has seen it. He has seen it. You can think that one million was a big breakthrough until you see somebody give one billion. Then you now say, no, 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 I've not started giving. You can think that, hey, I paid a title of five million. Then you say somebody gave a title of 500 million. Then you now say, no, I've not started tithing. You know why? You have seen something now. A new equation has been introduced to your life right now. Not that you are not grateful, but you know that there's something more. Hi. Glory be to God forevermore. How will God transform a shepherd boy at the backyard to become a king? He brought him to the king to come and be playing music for the king so that he could see how royalty behaves. And because he saw royalty, he became a royalty. Look, brothers and sisters, no experience is wasted. God will allow you to see some things because of where he wants to take you to. Is somebody here what I'm trying to say this somebody right now? So I'm asking you again, what do you see? See, I'm a tailor. Because you are all the people you see around you are who in the market. You are, your capacity may not increase. But when you enter a certain shop, you see somebody using three-story building to sew. And that three-story building is the show showroom, it's not the workshop. Because you don't get to meet his tailor. They are somewhere. Yeah. You will not begin to see possibility. You don't know that this one that you put the blue around your neck. I say, hey, 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 hey. Do, do. You are welcome. We you know that you have not done, you, you've not done anything. Do you get what we are trying to say right now? It's like I was speaking to somebody over there. <laughs> I don't know. Hallelujah. Do you get what we are saying right now? Genesis 13. So that means we are only going to discuss this one, this one point today. Wow. Genesis, Genesis, Genesis 13, Genesis 13, Genesis 13. I wanted to go halfway today. But man. Genesis 13 from verse 14. Verse 14. And the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot was separated from him, lift up your eyes now. And look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward, verse 15. For all the land you see, I give it to you. And from where you are, look, it said from where you are. See, some of you are trying to say, you know, I need this kind of places. No, he said, what you have is O N D Abi, from that O N D where you are. All I have is class 5 certificate from that place where you are. And if you Wumba, don't move to Metama first. From that Wumba where you are. I work in Federal Ministry of Information, Culture, and Human Development. It doesn't matter. Stay there. But from where you are. The point I'm trying to make is that where you are is not the problem. It's what you see. He says, take a look from where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. He said, as far as you can see, I will give it to you. 
I'm saying this thing so you begin to see certain possibilities this year. Those who see nothing, obtain nothing. Glory be to God forevermore. There is something about God that it that was that was awesome when I read it. I've told you before, maybe a few years back, maybe not here, maybe somewhere I was preaching. The Bible says in the beginning, right? God created the heaven and the earth, right? And uh, so the Bible says He made this one. He will say, make this one. Say, and the Lord saw that it was good. He made this one. He saw that it was good. He made this one. He saw that it was good. I ask you a question: Why you say something is good? Is it not in comparison with something? You cannot say something is good if you have not seen something before along that line. If you, have, if you wear a suit, a good suit like my brother this morning, to a village where they wear thatch leaves, they don't know whether it's a good cloth because they've not seen a good suit before. I can tell you whether your suit is good or not. Are you hearing me? I have seen suits. <laughs> you know, so if I tell you your suit is good, believe me. And if I don't make a comment, also believe me. <laughs> That means I use the eyes of grace to look at you and pardon you. Are you hearing me? What, are, what point am I trying to make, brothers and sisters? If God created it and said, this is good, what did God see? What was God comparing it with? That means everything God created, God already saw it in his heart. So when he saw what he created compared to what he saw in his heart, this is good. It matches. It matches. Are you hearing me? This matches. If you don't have a picture of how a good husband looks in your heart, you can marry a criminal. And you'll be okay. <laughs> it's true. The reason why you complain about your husband is not because he's the worst husband. He is not mentioning enough to the picture you have. That you have seen. Kai, am I getting across to anybody here this morning? When you see a pastor restless, it's not that we are restless. The picture that God has shown us, what is going on doesn't comply with, with that picture that God has shown us. That's why we are restless. Glory be to God forevermore. If you want to go ahead of everybody, you must see what others don't see. For me, what do you see this year? It's very important. Too. For epignosis, what do you see? If you see, eh, it's all right now. Everybody, let's all be doing like, like society of women's society. Look, you will not, you will not move forward. The problem we have as a nation is that we have leaders who don't see. They see siren. They see privileges. They see ability, ability to award contract. They see kickbacks. They see that's what they see. But God gave a land called Dubai a man who saw something. May we see. And God said to Abraham, I know you are a man of faith, but in order to get ahead as far as you can see, it's not about me anymore. It's about what you see. Because once you see it, I'm committed to giving it to you. Because we can tell a child that we don't get biscuit, right? we don't get it. But once a child has seen that biscuit with you, he will tell you, "Mommy, that cake, the one you kept, it will, it will take you, it will lead you to where you kept it." Because he has seen it. Having seen it, it makes you to be committed to give it to him. Because your denial doesn't make sense anymore. You know what? He has seen it. Wow. Glory be to God forevermore. Can we read a bit more this morning? Second Kings. Chapter 2. Second Kings chapter number 2. Let me read from verse 5. I read from verse 5 to 9. Now the sons of the prophet were at Jericho. Uh, who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? You are going to get your freedom today from this bloody man called Elijah. You know, because we don't understand you're kind of your master. 
We know we are good clothes. We go to court, the cat's come and say, here the man. We wear leather, leather garden. Do you know how the camel leather smells? That's what the man will wear. Be written white honey. Look, you know what? God is taking away your master from God. So you can at least you can live. So he answered, I know, but what? Keep silent. Let's go on. Then Elijah said to them, to him, that Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has called me unto Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives, as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And 50 men of the sons of prophet, or, or sons of the prophet, went and stood what? Facing them at a distance. You see their problem right now? Why the two of them stood by Jordan? They, 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 they stopped. Said two of you be going. Hallelujah. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. And it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. If you are serious to what we go, you see, now when you saw that that thing parted, are you not supposed to run follow them? Say, see this kind of miracle? They still waited. So it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Look at the answer, verse 10. So he said, you have asked for a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me. Did you see that right now? Yes, Nevertheless, if you want, see me. When I'm taken away from you, it shall be for you. Uh, uh, but if not, you shall not, it shall not be so. Glory be to God forever. Man. Verse 11. And it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire, separated the two of them. Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Verse, verse 12. Verse 12. Elijah what? Saw it. May you see it. May you see it. Whirlwind came. Horses of fire came. You know some people, this is what you will do. You'll be looking at the horses. You'll be looking at this one. Distraction. He saw it. If you see me when I'm taken away. He didn't allow the fire also to distract him. And that's what happened to a lot of people. How much have you made? What have you seen in life? That small thing, everything, because you flew, is what they call that one, business class. Since that time, you don't allow anybody to rest. God cannot rest. Angel will not rest. Pastor cannot rest. Nobody can rest. What have you seen? They are just chariots. Are you seeing him? He said, once you see me, that double portion will be your portion. Is somebody hearing me this morning right now? And the Bible says, and he saw it. Wow. Glory be to God forever. Man. You won't believe it. My time is up. So let me just leave you this morning. Hallelujah. Hi. Only one point. <laughs> but we thank God. Thank you, Sha. You know, that's what we said. We are going to explain some of these things to the point of understanding. It's amazing, you know. Let me just, let me round up on Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's just round up on Jeremiah chapter 1. So we can just go home for today. Hope you got something here right now. It's a good way to start the year. I will see. Honestly. When you see eh, your energy will be released. Your zeal will be released. Because you see, you have seen it. You know, when a man sees himself, say, the best student for you also is you. You have seen it. You will work harder than others because of what you saw. We saw God rather than others. What do you see? Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse 11. This is God commissioning um, Jeremiah. He told him that before you are a mother's womb, I formed you, I created you, and I've ordained you as a prophet to nations. But in order for you to be effective in your calling, God asked me a question. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? 
I'm a medical doctor, I'm an architect, I'm a lawyer, I am a this, I am a that. In that your calling, what do you see? He says, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of almond tree. <laughs> then the Lord said to me, you have seen well. I am ready to perform my work. Somebody said, what is the significance of almond tree? Ah, Holy Spirit. He didn't say I see cashew tree. He didn't say I see olive tree. Because this was about the olive tree he saw. God has already anointed him. He doesn't need to see another olive tree. Uh, so you must see something else. He said, I saw almond tree. I'm trying to edit it. <laughs> if you go to book of number chapter 17, remember Aaron's rod that boarded. What did Babu say? Babu says he boarded and he was an almond tree. 17, number 17, 17, 18, 17, 18 or something. I can't remember. I pray I get it right. If it's not, we'll do for it. Okay. Numbers. 17. Did you see it there? It came to pass on the next day that Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron, of the house of Levi, has parted forth and uh, uh, put forth balls. And produced what? And blossom and yielded what? Drive what? Almonds. Which is a proof of God's approval. It's a proof also of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, the dead tree that was laid down. That when he rose up again, he became almond tree. That is a proof that God will keep his reward towards you. That's where he said, what did you see? I saw almond tree. I can see that you will keep your word. God said, you are my I will keep my word just as you saw it. Just like you said it, I will see it. Just like you saw it. You get what we are saying this morning right now? What do you see? Abraham said, Abraham was going to kill Isaac. He said, no, Bible said he already saw him raised. So he didn't kill him because of what he saw. So, can I give you assignment? Some of you assignment? I want to, I want to see your age, picture of yourself at 90. See it. I want to have a picture of your home. Especially the, especially the country homes. You know what I mean? That one that has compound. Greens. Are you hearing me? You must have that picture. It will prepare you. You are grateful for what you have right now, but you are looking for that particular one. Where? How do you see your children? What do you see of life? Do you know there's a way what you see that some people will just be around you, you just look at them, you just be them. <laughs> We're not going to together for long because they say, Where are they? See, <laughs> we're not going the same direction. What do you see? Ask the man of God, Jeremiah, what do you see? He saw, I saw what an almond tree. Say you have seen well. May you see well. Amen. Uh, I want to round up on that this morning. May you see well. Amen. He said, You have what you have seen well. May you see well. Amen. What kind of home do you see? Where people are boxing each other. Uh, you are saved from this angle. God will punish you. And I want to say, God fire you. Is that what you saw? No. What do you see? Do you see a man and a woman that you wake up in the morning to do morning devotion together? To pray unto God? And you can say, look, we are believing God for this. Let, let me believe God with you. Something that's about that. When you hit the world and the world bounces you back and you get to him, your wife will say, don't worry. We are still going to conquer. I am with you. What do you see? Shh. Brothers and sisters, I rest my case again this morning. 
May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. You will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus. Lay your hand on your eyes as a sign. Say in the name of Jesus, I see well. That is weak. Let's say it again. In the name of Jesus, I see well. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate God, everybody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God.